to watch it back or pass on to any colleagues, then you can do so um, once the link has been shared. So the agenda for today, um, we're going to give um, an overview of the grants team um, and also of the programme and um, talk about um, project grants, children and young people. So um, purpose, aims and objectives. We're going to talk who, about who can apply to so eligibility criteria, um, what we can fund, the application process cycle, when to apply. And we'll go through step-by-step -step application guidance and what happens next, so assessment and additional support available. So as you can imagine, we have a lot to get through today. Um, we will um, answer questions at the end if we have time, um, but in the meantime, you may want to post your questions in the chat. And if we don't have time to address them in today's session, then we'll be able to copy them over and email answers over to you um, when we email the slides and things. Um, so please do use the chat function for that. Um, in terms of housekeeping, um, please do keep yourself on mute the whole time. Um, as I mentioned, the meeting will be recorded and the recording will be made available online. So if you don't wish to be seen, please do keep your camera off. Um, and just to uh, remind you that a copy of the slides will be shared after the event. Uh, so um, in terms of some of the key terms that are, are going to be used in this presentation today, so VCS, Voluntary and Community Sector, um, we'll be using organisation and group interchangeably. Um, we may refer to structured groups of residents when talking about community chest grants. Um, grant agreement is the legally, um, legally binding agreement for all organisations that they have to sign. Um, and the request is your request for funding. So it's often used interchangeably with project or application. Um, so just an introduction to the team. So I'm Lisa, I'm the Grants and Investment Manager. Over to you, Tom. I'm Tom Shaw. I'm a senior grants and investment officer in the team. Uh, the rest of the team who you may be in contact with are uh, Moya Adenay, who's our grants and investment officer, Caitlin Clifton, who's a senior grants and investment officer, Claire Whitney, who's a strategic lead for our area, and Sue Brown, who's a strategic delivery officer working in the team. Um, we're responsible for all aspects of the programme, for including applications, ex assessments, contracting payments, monitoring visits, policy work, evaluation and review. So our programme objectives for this year. Um, the grants programme will continue to focus on our overarching programme objective, which is to deliver actions which aim to narrow the gap in outcomes between certain disadvantaged groups and the wider community. In addition to this, the two previous programme priorities will remain for this year. These are to promote social inclusion, social inclusion, encourage independence and develop personal resilience, and to build positive relationships between groups and communities that will maintain the high levels of community cohesion in Hackney. Our schemes for this year, as we're focusing on the Children and Young People's Fund today, we've um, this table will give you an overview of the grants programme for our application and they'll be discussed in further detail shortly. Um, we will have the project grants programme which replaces our old main and small grants. This is for applications of up to 20,000 depending on the income size of the organisation and projects will last for up to 12 months in duration and no longer. Uh, within project grants we have the separate stand for children and young people's grants which we're going in more detail today. This aligns to our old main grants, small grants and holiday play scheme grants. Uh, this grant is now being delivered in collaboration with our colleagues in Young Hackney. Uh, we've restricted the income size of this strand, meaning that organisations can only apply with an income between £10,000 and £1 million. Uh, this is based on our research of our own grants programme over the past five years, along with data on what other fund funders are supporting in the borough. Um, this is going to be an interim year. Uh, and we're looking to learn from the programmes this year. But we've also undertaken some analysis of data and feedback from VCS over the past year and to inform our proposals. Our analysis has identified that the majority of grants from external funders are awarded to organisations with an annual turnover above a million. In line with the priorities of our VCS strategy, we want to ensure that we continue to protect smaller grassroots organisations and those with less income are able to continue to access resources. 
Therefore, we are limiting the applications to organisations with turnovers below this threshold. Uh, the community chess will remain similar to previous years, but this year we'll have four rounds of funding. We'll also have limited group size to those with an income less than £10,000. This is so that we can focus on ensuring that the community chess grants reach the grassroots groups who the funding is intending to support. Uh, we'll also have a community infrastructure, which is a new programme for this year. There will be grants of up to 45,000 available, although we anticipate that most grants will be around the 10,000 to 25,000 pound mark. This will be a two-stage application programme and the, express, um, the expression of interest stage is open from February. As I said earlier, this is an interim year of the programme. If you would like to know more about our other grant schemes, schemes or our overall approach to grants this year, please find a recording of our recent grants launch events, which uh, we've had a few over the last couple of days, and they will be on the website in the next coming days. Uh, I'll hand back over to you, Lisa. Thanks, Tom. That's really helpful. And just to say, um, in our previous session, we had quite a few people asking questions about the community infrastructure grant. So there will be an information session on that grant specifically um, next week. I believe it's Thursday. The link to sign up is on the website. So do sign up if you'd like more information about um, that grant specifically, as especially as it's a new um, fund for this year. Um, so just a general overview of this Children and Young People's Fund. So the purpose of the grant um, is to fund short term activities working towards the programme objective and priorities mentioned, and these projects will be targeting young people specifically. So applicant organisations will be asked uh, which one of the six following youth equality outcomes they'll be working towards. So these include, for example, being healthy, young people are supported to become more active and to explore and understand issues relevant to the development of healthy relationships, positive physical, emotional and mental health. So that's just one example of the six and we'll talk about those in a bit more detail later. Um, so additionally, organisations will be asked to describe their target beneficiary group and why they're working with this group um, specifically. So this could include, for example, um, disabled people or inactive or less active people. Applications for this strand should be between £1,001 and £10,000, depending on the organisation's annual income, and the projects cannot last longer than a year. So some past examples of funded projects include a um, summer holiday play scheme for 60 children with long-term health conditions and a weekly homework club for children with learning difficulties with an emphasis on improving social skills. Back over to you, Tom. Um, as Lisa mentioned previously, the grants programme has two overarching priorities, uh, with there being further six equality outcomes for the Children and Young People's grants. These are one, identity and belonging, two, being healthy, three, making a positive contribution, four, achieving economic and financial well-being, five, enjoying and achieving, and six, being safe. Uh, our general application eligibility, eligibility criteria is as follows. Organisations must be not-for-profit, value-driven and principally reinvest their surpluses to further social, environmental or cultural objectives. These are typically the following organisations. Uh, one registered charity or charitable incorporated organisation, charitable company or social enterprise, community interest company, a company limited by guarantee. These must have uh, these companies must have asset locks and be wholly non for profit and without share capital. It can also be a cooperative and community benefit society, an unregistered community group, uh, or a structured group of residents. This last one's for community chest only. Private businesses and individuals are not eligible to apply for grant funding from this program. Along with these, at least. 80% of the people benefiting from the funding must be Hackney residents. Applications must align with the programme guidance for the scheme they are applying for, including start and end dates and annual income criteria. If applicants who have received a grant through this programme in previous years have failed to fulfil funding requirements of a previous grant, including such things as returning required monitoring forms, they may not be eligible to apply for a grant. As well as this, organisations must have a constitution and or registration number, 
a bank account held in the name of the organisation, annual accounts and or financial protection, have an appropriate level of insurance coverage for their projects and activities, have appropriate safeguarding policies and procedures for their project, and demonstrate that at least 80% of the people benefiting from this project will be Hackney residents. Uh, back over to you, Lisa. Thanks, Tom. Um, so just an overview of we, what we cannot fund with this scheme. So we can't um, fund applications that don't meet the grant scheme criteria. Uh, we can't fund retrospective applications, so a project that's already taken place. And um, we can't fund applications that last for longer than a year. Um, we can't fund capital expenses, um, so for example, building projects or purchasing goods. Um, we can't um, provide contingency funding or contingent liabilities. So contingency funding is placing funding aside in case of unforeseen circumstances. <laughs> contingent liabilities um, and potential liabilities are something that may not occur, such as warranties on equipment um, or phones, guarantor loans, potential legal fees, etc. Um, we can't provide funding for activities that are um, religiously or politically orientated, although applications from religious groups um, are welcome. Um, we can't fund the purchase of alcohol or activities in which, the, in which alcohol consumption is a predominant theme. Um, we can't um, fund applications for an individual or where an individual receives the main benefit. Um, and further detailed guidance on this is outlined on our VCS prospectus. So in terms of the application process, this does um, differ slightly per grant scheme, but a general overview is, so the first stage is plan. So as I said, we have guidance documents for each scheme um, that have been published on the website, and we strongly recommend you take time to read and understand all of these resources to help you plan your application. Um, and in addition, there are information sessions such as this one taking place over the coming weeks. Um, so once you're ready to apply, all applications must be made via our online application portal ahead of the deadline. We're unable to accept late applications, um, so do factor in time for this. If you're experiencing difficulties with the portal, please contact us in plenty of time so that we can help you. Please don't leave it until, you know, five to five on the day of the deadline to tell us you're having issues with the portal. Um, once your application has been submitted, the grants team will um, process this to ensure that groups meet the eligibility criteria and check for any errors on the application form, such as um, start and end dates not aligning to the fund. And they'll conduct due diligence checks based on the policy documents that you've submitted. Um, your application will then be passed on to a team of trained volunteer assessors from um, the council and from within the VECS and they'll score your application and meet as a grants panel um, to discuss which applications will be funded. So please note that we will always receive more applications than we can ever fund so assessors need to make really difficult decisions based on the information provided in your applications as well as taking into account what else we're funding to ensure that we have a good geographical inequalities spread so that is why we meet as a panel to discuss all of the applications in the round. So when decisions are made, applicants will be notified and um, all unsuccessful applicants will be given the opportunity to get a feedback from the team and we strongly encourage you to um, take us up on this offer. Um, once, um, if you are funded, then we will contact you um, with your grant agreement that will be issued and signed electronically and we will commence the payment process and um, all organisations are paid through our supplier management system. Um, after your page, you're in the delivery phase of your grant, so please deliver your grant as outlined in your application and grant agreement. If you do meet, need to make any changes to your grant, please do contact your grants officer to discuss this in advance of making any changes. In terms of reporting, you'll be asked to submit a written end of grant report on our system approximately one month after the end date of your project. Some larger grants may also be asked for midpoint calls and or site visits um, just to see how your project's going. Your grants officer will provide feedback before closing off your grant, so after your end of grant report. And just to note, any unspent funds will need to be returned to us as they will go back into the grants pot for the next year of funding. Back to you, Tom. Uh, so the application dates overview. Um, for this grant, for the project grants and the children and young people's grant, the application period is open now and it will be closing on 
uh, 25th of April 2022. Um, applicants will be notified by the 16th of May 2022. Um, so when you're ready to apply, all applications must be submitted via our grants application portal. Uh, if you just, I'll wait for Lisa to open that now. We're going to go through the, uh, the whole of the online form now. So we'll go through the questions on this and how to log in and give you a couple of tips and insights on how you might answer these questions. So firstly, when you access the form, it will take you through to the eligibility quiz. Apologies, it's being slow, but I think we're getting there. <laughs> right, here we go. Okay, so you see the first question on here is which grant are you applying for? If you're applying for the project grant, you will select that, but in this case, we'll want to be applying for the Children and Young People's Grant. So if you sit down and select that. If we go through the next few questions, we'll have, uh, you must answer yes to all of the questions to progress on to the form. And we'd also recommend opening up a Word document and writing your answers in there, just in case anything should happen with the online portal so that you've got a copy of your answers uh, to go by. So just to let you know, once you've gone through the eligibility quiz, this is what the application will look like. So you can see each different tab here for the different sections of the application. Um, we're going to go through each of these now. So I'm going to stop sharing um, on the form so that we can go back to the presentation to discuss in a bit more detail. Excellent. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, so section one of the application is details about your organisation. Uh, section isn't scored, but question 1.8 will ask what your organisation does. And fill filling this in clearly will give the assessors a good grasp of who you are as an organisation. Uh, back over to you, Lisa. Thank you. Um, so section two is probably the most important part of the application, um, as this is the bulk of um, what your funding is asking for. So we don't mark your application based on spelling and grammar, but we do need to be able to understand what you're saying. So make sure um, you're really clear. Um, kind of you can use bullet points if you want um, or break things down in section, but make sure that um, you're, you're breakdown can be understood by someone who knows very little about your organisational project because that's where an assessor is coming from essentially. Um, so question 2.1, your project summary. So this is essentially um, the opportunity for you to tell us your project title. Um, so it might be like a snappy title or just um, a short summary. Um, where it will be delivered. So um, this is the um, exact location of your project. So if your delivery is outside of Hackney or near the borders, then have a think about explaining how you'll meet the 80% beneficiary criteria. And your project start and end date. So remember that your project cannot last longer than 12 months um, from the start date and the start date must be within this financial year. We don't fund retrospective applications. Um, so question 2.4 is really important. Um, so this is um, where you're asked to choose um, your grants priority that your project is working towards and talk about this in more detail. So you should include here what the project will achieve, how it fits with the priority, how it will achieve this and how it will be delivered, who will benefit and why. So the next point is your request uh, you want to think about each of these bot bullet points when you're writing your answer. Uh, you want to make it clear uh, to the assessors what your project is about. And if an assessor still doesn't understand what your project is after reading each section a few times, it probably wouldn't won't be a successful application. Um, make sure you clearly link your prior your project to your chosen priority as well. And in section, we want to think about how your idea fits into one of the grant's programmes, objectives, and choose accordingly. 
Um, some examples from previous years include a holiday play scheme to support development and social skills such as confidence and teamwork, which will fit well into priority one, or for priority two, a community sports event bringing children together from different religious communities. Some projects may feel that they contribute to both. This is fine and you can reference this in your answer, but remember that it is better to align strongly and clearly with one objective than try to cover both vaguely. The next are scoring uh, criteria. Um, this is how assessors will be looking at your answer to determine success. Assessors will give a rating to each section, then an overall rating to the application based on this. For example, if an assessor rates this section as good, they will note what was missing if it wasn't cleared up in another section and discuss this at panel in comparison to other applications. Um, I'll hand back over to you, Lisa, for the next section. Thank you. Um, so question 2.5 is another really, really key question. So here you're going to be asked to choose which of the six equality outcomes um, your project best aligns to and describe how your project will achieve or work towards this, what success looks like and how you'll measure this. So again, some projects may feel that they contribute to more than one of these um, equality outcomes. This is absolutely fine and you can reference that in your answer, but do remember it's better to align um, strongly and clearly with one outcome than to try and cover many vaguely. Um, so these six outcomes have been adapted from the National Youth Work Curriculum and we'll share the link to that at the end in case you'd like to um, read about that a bit more. But each outcome area contains further details. So for example, on this slide, um, the being healthy category. Um, so that means that um, young people are supported to become more active and to explore and understand issues relevant to the development of healthy relationships, positive physical, emotional and mental health. Um, and then there are some of the more um, other outcomes here. So there are six outcomes in total. Back to you, Tom. Next, we'll go through a scoring criteria. Um, so very good answers for this will show outcomes that are chosen are, and are clearly aligned with the project that they want to deliver and seem appropriate and achievable given the project activities. How they will work towards their outcomes will be appropriate and realistic and they will have clearly outlined what success looks like and what tools they will use in order to measure this. Me measure this. So question 2.6 will ask about how your project is will be run and managed. Uh, make sure you provide relevant background of your experience uh, for the background experience of your organization and staff and discuss all em elements of your project planning and delivery, including planning, delivery and evaluation. For very good answers for this, we'll um, be very clear on how the project will be managed, who will be involved, and what relevant skills and exper experience they will bring to the project. Uh, back over to you, Lisa. Thanks, Tom. So question 2.7 is asking how your project will involve young people in the design, delivery and review. So you need to think about all of these components separately and make sure that you cover all of them off. So make sure it's clear how and why young people are involved. And also you could include your previous experience of how you've involved young people in this way as well. And I think that's a really powerful demonstration of your track record that you can show how um, young people are really hard, um, you know, the heart of, of what you're delivering and why. Think about monitoring and evaluation as well and, and how you use young people's feedback. So in terms of scoring criteria for this question, so very good answers will be really clear on how and why young people are involved at every stage of the project and how their input really helps to shape the project. So question 2.8 is about risk. Um, so I can't say this strongly enough, never be subtle or imply things about risk always be very, very explicit. If your project is working with children or vulnerable um, people, you should always be referencing safeguarding in your risk section. You'll also want to think about other risks such as COVID. 
All projects, large and small, present risks. And in this section, you're expected to complete that risk assessment, clearly outlining what risks may occur and how these will be mitigated. So good applications will um, clearly identify any relevant risks, assess the possibility of this happening and the impact if it did, and articulate how this will be mitigated in practice. So obviously this will look different for every project um, and we'll assess it um, in terms of comprehensiveness based on the project ask and, and proportionality and things but you must make sure you always cover um, as a basic safeguarding health and safety and, and COVID. So in terms of um, kind of things you should be covering off. So again, how your project will ensure effective safeguarding, health and safety measures, potential impacts of COVID, and remember, identify risk, assess the likelihood and discuss the mitigation. Now, previously we've had um, some answers um, have directed assessors to safeguarding policy or a risk assessment document. And while you can and should make reference to these, um, and these will be looked at in your due diligence checks, you do really need to be outlining key risks and mitigations clearly in this answer. So it's absolutely fine if you want to say, look at our specific policy for more information, but we really do expect you to outline the key risks and mitigations here in this question. So back over to you, Tom. Thanks, Lisa. Um, a very good answer for this section will clearly acknowledge the main risks involved in the project, have a clear and appropriate e response for each of these. It will cover uh, safeguarding clearly and thoroughly, and has also factored in any contingency plans for COVID. The next section is beneficiaries. Uh, the type this is uh, the type of people that you want to support through your project. And only one part of this section is scored, but make sure that your answers align with what you have told us about your project so far. If you've told us your project is specifically targeting people not to four years old, then but then tick multiple age groups in this section, assessors may be confused by that answer. Um, if you are targeting groups based on particular qualities such as ethnicities, be explicit about this. Um, we appreciate that there's no kind of one size fits all model when it comes to beneficiaries, as everyone you support with is an individual. But please try to work as best as you can within the constraints and be clear about what uh, main beneficiary group you are targeting. 3.1 and 3.2 are for numbers of beneficiaries and volunteers any and just make sure that these are consistent with your narrative and what you've put previously in the application. Um, yeah, and back over to you, Lisa. Thanks, Tom. And yeah, just to emphasize um, with those numbers, it may seem like a bit of a silly thing to say, but we've had, for example, um, you know, someone put 3000 beneficiaries in their um, number of beneficiaries and then in their project description, they've talked about 50 beneficiaries. And it might be that the 3000 are indirect beneficiaries and the 50 were direct, but it just leaves a lot of confusion for assessors. So make sure when you're checking through your application that everything is really consistent and covered. Um, so, as mentioned, you'll be asked to choose one primary beneficiary group. Now, again, we appreciate this may be difficult as you may feel like your beneficiaries align to a number of these groups. So um, I can see where, where some difficulties may, may arise. Um, but the next part of the question is really asking you why you're focusing on this group and how you're best placed to do so organisationally. So you may want to reference more than one of these beneficiary groups in your answer, which is absolutely fine. But again, just to um, re-emphasise, it's better to align with one of these very strongly than many weekly. So just think about that in your answer. In your answer, make sure you cover, um, you know, why you're supporting this group, why the project is needed, and um, how the project will benefit this group, and also how your organisation is best placed to support them. So bring in evidence of why you're supporting this group, and this could be evidence using data and statistics um, that's available locally or nationally, but also really talk about your own experience and track record. So if you've been working with this beneficiary group for the last 10 years, tell us about it, tell us why, tell us what you know, tell us how your interventions support this group and, and use your own feedback and statistics in there because that gives us a really good flavour of your knowledge and expertise as an organisation and why you're doing what you're doing. 
So very good answers will be clear on which group or groups they're targeting. It will fit in well with the rest of their application and make sense with what they want to deliver. And the organization are able to articulate why the project is needed, who the beneficiary group is, and also the organization's own track record using the evidence that I mentioned. Over to you, Tom. So section 3.4 asks you to tell us if your project is supporting people of characteristics, including ethnicity, age, religion, etc. Um, is section again not scored, but it gives the assessors a good idea of any particular equalities groups that you're supporting, and this is taken into consideration at panel. So we, I mean, we're looking to fund a large a large area of different groups so we want to make sure that this is spread well across the diff uh, different groups within Hackney and that's what we will be taking into consideration when we get to panel stage. Section four, um, this is all about your budget, this section is scored, uh, there are cal calculator buttons to help you to ensure your breakdowns are correct, make sure your budget breakdowns make sense uh, in conjunction with the rest of your application. If you start talking about items in your budget that are not discussed elsewhere in the application, then this will cause confusion for the assessors. Uh, we have created the how much I can apply for section to help you work out just that. As a reminder, organisations cannot apply for a grant that is more than 50% of their annual income. And the calculator will work this out for you. So if you put your annual income, for example, £20,000, it will tell you if the maximum that you can apply for is 10000 Obviously, if your project only costs 3000 to live to deliver, you will ask for £3,000. Uh, this is just, the calculator is just there to tell you the maximum amount we would consider. Similarly, if your annual income is over 20000 then the £10,000 maximum you could apply for is less than the 50% of your annual income, so you won't need to worry about that. Um, back Thanks, over to you, Tom. Lisa. And um, just to say, um, we mentioned this in the last session as well. I appreciate this sounds quite confusing when we're explaining it to you, but um, please rest assured this is all written down in the guidance, so you should be able to follow it. And when you actually have a chance to look at the application form and see how the calculation buttons work, um, I'm sure it will make a lot more sense. But obviously, if there are more questions about this, then um, you'll have our, our contact details if you want to speak to us further. Um, so section four, um, your budget, as Tom mentioned. So question 4.1 is asking how much you're requesting from us for your project. Um, there's also question 4.2, um, which is the total cost of your project. So you only need to fill in this question if we're part funding something. So say, for example, the whole project costs £20,000 and you're getting £10,000 from another funder and £10,000 from us. It's your opportunity to tell us about this here. Um, just a top tip for question um, 4.1 and for 4.2, remember to always check that this answer is the same one that's given in your budget breakdown, which we'll talk about in a second. You'd be quite surprised how many applications we get that the overall ask they say is £5,000 and the budget breakdown shows a breakdown of £4,000. And it's obviously just a small mistake that's happened somewhere along the way, but that obviously um, creates a lot of confusion for assessors and, and they're not sure exactly um you know what they're assessing what the organization's asking for so i can't emphasize um, enough how much you need to to check those numbers and use those calculator buttons that are there to help you um so this is what the budget table looks like and this is question 4.3 um, so again, this is a really important section as it tells us about how you've costed your project, what you're spending on, etc. And um, there are eight rows for you to use. You don't have to use them all, um, but you can do. Um, and there is space below if you need to add more details as well. Um, so within the budget table, there are three columns. Um, so the first one to the left is for your expenditure heading. So for example, in this case, um, we've got venue hire, um, 20 weeks times 1.5 hours at £40 an hour. Um, and then we've got the total request from Hackney is £1,000. And in this example, the organisation is getting part funding from another source. So if they've got £200 from there. So that you can see how the budget breakdown works. If you're not getting funding from other sources, you can leave that part blank. Just fill in the middle column for the Hackney ask. 
At the bottom of the budget table, there are two sections with calculator icons. So as I mentioned, these calculate the sums that you've put in your table. So always, always, always use these to check that everything you've put in your table is adding up correctly. As I mentioned, we do see a lot of projects fall down because their numbers are inconsistent. Back to you, Tom. So the scoring criteria for this, um, a very good answer will provide thorough detailed and realistic costs based uh, on the project information previously provided. The budget items will clearly link to the narrative and this enhances the, it basically enhances the overall clarity of the project ask. Next uh, question 4.4 .4 is an optional question. It gives you an opportunity to tell us where your other funding is coming from if you have Indicated, indicated that you're getting funding from elsewhere as well. If you've indicated that we are part funding your project, but don't put anything in this answer, in your answer here, um, this will again cause confusion for assessors and may question the viability of your project. Section five is for you to put in your organization's bank details. Um, this will hopefully speed up the process of payment if you're awarded funding. Make sure you complete this accurately as mistakes can cause issues with paying your grant if you are successful. Uh, the next section is over to you, Lisa. Thank you, Tom. So um, section six is to um, attach your key documents. So this, but it's really important to upload your due diligence documents with your application as this is all checked by the grants team to ensure that you're eligible to apply. So the exact documents you need does vary slightly, but generally you must attach um, your official governing document, your equality and diversity policy, your health and safety policy, your most recent set of audited or externally verified annual accounts, a recent redacted bank statement, and this should match um, the information that you put in section five, as Tom just outlined. And again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to be accurate um, with, with those bank details, because if, if there are mistakes, it can cause errors further down the line. Um, proof of insurance cover, so for example, a certificate of insurance, um, and obviously for this strand specifically, a safeguarding children policy will be really, really um, key for you to um, upload with your application. Now under each um, box to upload your documents, there is an upload button. So make sure you are um, clicking that after each document to, in order to attach them properly. And this has caught me out a couple of times. So we have made um, a how-to video about this that's on our FAQs page if you want to have a look to see how it works in practice. Um, so just to say, you may be contacted after submitting your application if there are any missing documents or if the grants team needs to clarify anything with you. So please do look out for this email. So the last part of the form is the declaration. So you must tick to confirm that you're authorized to submit the application, that you understand the conditions of the grant should you be successful, and you must include your name and position in the organization here. Um, there's also the optional question 6.2 um, to tick if you would um, like to be added to our mailing list if you are not already. Uh, so what happens after you've submitted your application? So as I mentioned, we'll always receive more applications than we're ever able to ever able to fund, unfortunately. Your application will undergo eligibility and due diligence checks, checks by the grant team. Um, it will then be assessed by volunteer assessors from the council and the VCS. The volunteers are trained and given guidance documents to support them to make a fair assessment of your application using the scoring criteria mentioned. Uh, we will be recruiting volunteer assessors over the coming weeks, so please do look out for further information about this and sign up if you'd be interested in taking part. So the strongest applications will be discussed at an assessment panel and um, during this panel assessors will discuss applications in comparison to each other and will take into consideration key issues such as equalities, strategic objectives and spread around the borough. Um, and as mentioned before, we'll always offer feedback to unsuccessful applicants and encourage you to think about this for future applications. So uh, the next this is a list of some key documents and resources available to support you with your application further. Um, our website will always contain all the up-to-date information and links that you need, including links to application forms. 
The VCS Prospectus will give you an overview of the whole grants program as well as information about general eligibility. There's a guidance document for each grants program, which includes more information and guidance on the specific application questions. Um, we've compiled a document with information on general support available for VCS organisations. We also have resources on our website which you can use to help you with checking your policy documents for due diligence for purchases. And new for this year, we, as Lisa mentioned earlier, we've also created some video resources to guide you through some of the specific processes, such as how to log into the application portal. Um, we'll keep adding videos as and when the need arises. So if there's any uh, section which you're confused about, or we get a lot of um, questions about, we will consider putting up another video just for just to help people with those sections. Um, as mentioned, the outcomes for this programme have been adapted, adapted from the National Youth Work Curriculum. Additional support is available via our, via our team and also through partner organisations. And if you want to contact us, if you have any general questions about the programme, Hackney CVS are able to provide more bespoke application support through their organisational development team. We'll also be running application sessions between February and April. East London Business Alliance are also able to offer an application review service where trained business volunteers will look through your applications and provide comments and feedback. And Hackney CVS and East London Business Alliance application support services are free for VCS organisations to access. Um, back over to you, Lisa. Thanks, Tom. Um, so I think Mohammed is on the call and he's just going to give a little bit more information about um, HCVS's organisational development service. So I'll pass on to you now, Mohammed. Thank you for joining us again. Thanks, Lisa. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Mohammed Mansour, the head of VCS Development at Hackney CVS. And I just wanted to take just a few minutes to walk you through the services we offer to support organisations in Hackney. Um, one of the most, one, uh, one of the one of the famous services that we actually provide is a one-to-one -one support on any organizational issue you have and could be related to policies governance uh, marketing whatever that issue that you actually have in hand you can always contact one of our uh, one of our team to have a one-to-one -one session to address that issue and one is more related to the grants is our fundraising support service where we can actually help you with the project idea planning on how you can help you brainstorm how the project idea looks like, your activities plan, and how you start looking at setting the budget for that project. Um, we also support with proofreading applications. So if you already drafted your application, we can provide you with comments on how you can improve um, your answers to some of the questions on the applications. And read, um, read basically through the application to see if it makes sense. If it doesn't really make sense to us, um, I'm sure it's going to be a struggle to make sense to the grant assessors as well. Um, we provide this as a critical friend, um, so the advice we give is only going to be based on what, what is written on the application. We can't write any part of the application for you, I'm afraid. And we also offer partnership support um, on kind of a group basis. So if you're already in contact with other groups and you want to kind of put together a partnership application, we can actually help you kind of getting the partnership together and put the right structure. And also, how you how you start going about developing a partnership uh, funding application. And we offer a range of other services around training. So we train uh, we provide training on. Uh, the, the core competencies for working in the charity sector, but we also started introducing a mentoring initiative. So anyone who's attending any of our training will have a follow-up what what mentoring on that specific training subject from us. And please do sign up to our newsletter and check our website resources because we always try to keep a bank of resources available for organizations to use. And when on our newsletter, not only can we all we always try to put any funding opportunity that's relevant to hacking organization on the newsletter, so organizations can can be ready with a forward plan to apply for funding before they get before they can 
uh, they, they, before they actually have to firefight with a deadline when it's scheduled too soon. And we also offer hot desk in space at affordable rates and uh, affordable rates in our offices. If you're looking for a base in Hackney, which includes also a postal service. Um, and any associate members uh, of, uh, of Hackney CVS have access to a free small meeting room. So now COVID-19 restrictions has relaxed and we're looking to go back into more physical meetings uh, in the next few months. So please make, um, if you're interested in having, in having like a small meeting room or maybe just with, uh, for interviews, you can always contact us uh, to book the meeting room for that purposes. And as Lisa probably mentioned earlier, always plan when you're actually putting the funding application together. And if you want to contact us to provide you with support on your funding application, please also ensure, ensure that we have enough leading time where you can actually provide you with comments so you can go back and reflect on these comments on how, how you can do, rephrase your answers or add more detail if needs be. Don't just wait for the deadline because it's the last thing you want to do that you put a lot of work in the application and then you just end up with a not really strong application to put forward. Um, and that was it, you know, in a nutshell. I hope I didn't take so much of the time today. Thank you so much, Mohammed. That's that's really, really helpful. And um, yeah, it's great to know that there's so much support available um, for organisations that access via Hackney CVS. So thank you. Um, so, as mentioned, um, after this session, we'll be in touch again um, with a copy of the slides from today, um, and we will also um, be um, sharing the information that Mohammed has spoken through as well, so that you can get more information about that. Um, we'll also be in touch um, with a short feedback form, so we'd really appreciate if you could provide any feedback um, on this session or our approach to grants generally. As we mentioned earlier in the presentation, this is um, very much a learning year and we want to hear a lot from the sector to see um, what we're doing well, what can be improved, and so any comments at all will be really, really appreciated and it's always really helpful for us to use when kind of making improvements to the programme in future years, so please, please Please do give us your feedback. Um, so I'm going to stop recording um, the session now and as um, mentioned again this will be available on our